Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we will look up the most recent date based on a condition. So we want to find the most recent date here of a Power BI course because that is mentioned in cell F2. Now I've done a video in the past on uh, my YouTube channel of how to look up the next date based on a condition in the future and it was a question that was posted in the comments on that video where somebody asked me how would you find out a date in the past the most recent one and this is the result of it I had a train journey into London the next morning so as soon as I saw that question I thought I know what I'm gonna be doing on that train journey and yeah this is what I came up with in that hour's journey I'm going to use a couple of helper columns uh, to come along for the ride here as well. So let's start with our first helper column in cell C2. And just like my previous video, for those who saw it, we are going to need some help from my friend Count If. Because in this scenario, we need to know how many occurrences of these classes there have been up to today's date. Now at the time of recording this, it's the 6th of March. Uh, so we're coming all the way down to row 11 here. So this Power BI course on the 7th is actually tomorrow. So we don't want to be including that at the moment. The most recent one was the one on the 3rd of March. But first of all, because people can change that in cell F2, we need to know how many occurrences were there of each one up until today's. So I'm going to use the if function because I'm only interested if it's before today. Anything after today, I, I couldn't care less about. Avoid it. So the logical test is if the date is less than today's date. It's got to be in the past. I'm not interested in the present day. It's got to be previous to today. In goes my comma. And if it is previous today, I want to use count if to count the occurrences of them. So I'm just going to type this in rather than select because there's some uh, funky work with some dollar signs here. I'm going to have a fixed reference to the first um, class here, which is going to be that Excel Advanced B2. And then I'm going to have a relative reference to the other end of it, comma, B2 is a criteria. So I'm looking for that class in the range of classes up to the kind of active cell. So a fixed starting position and non-fixed ending position of the range. I'll close off that bracket, back in the if function. If it's a date in the future or today, just keep the cell blank. I don't have any interest in it. So when I press enter on that formula, for our first helper column here and copy it down, I have number of occurrences leading up to today's date and then stopping because of my lack of interest. So I can see that there are two occurrences of uh, an Excel Advanced Power BI and Excel Beginners, but only one occurrence of uh, a kind of Power Query and Formulas and Excel Intermediate. Uh, just having a glance at that. So here's one helper column. Next one I'm going to need is just a simple formula to combine the name of the class with that number of occurrence. So I'm concatenating those two. If I press enter and copy that down, that's not very pretty to look at, but it's going to be very useful for what we have. And when I've completed this, I'll be hiding those columns. Nobody wants to see them, but they are really assisting the, the ultimate a formula that we're going to end with here. The next step which I'm going to put in the header cell here because ultimately I'm going to be hiding these so not going to be too fussy about where I put my information. I want to count the maximum occurrence. So when I'm looking for Power BI I need to make sure I get the the last one of them which is the second one in this case. But it could be the first one could be the eighth one depending on my data this is a very small list so another count if function is actually a count ifs this time because I need to first of all count 
um, in the range of classes how many power BIs there are, F2. If in column A, the date is less than today. Now in the countifs function, when doing this logic, we need to make sure that less than sign is wrapped in a string, and then we concatenate onto that the today function. So it's written quite different to how we did in the if function uh, a few minutes ago um, in our first formula, where we can just say less than today. But in, in functions like count if, sum ifs, we need to write our expressions in a string unless we're going to reference a cell, and then I'll concatenate onto that the other functions. Quite different in the way it's written, although ultimately it's the, the same logic. I'm going to close off that bracket. So this should tell me that there's two. There are two occurrences. That is the maximum number of Power BI classes before today. And now that we have that information, we are ready for the concluding formula that will return the most recent date. And I'm going to use index and match for the lookup here because we need to look up a value down column D and return from column A, which is to the left of our lookup area. We could have set it up differently and quite happily done a V lookup, but this is the way I'm working index this up well returning from the array of column a and then i'll use the match function and in the match function we need to combine the class name which is f2 concatenation in goes the ampersand to the number of occurrences which is d1 in my spreadsheet the lookup array will be that helper column which looks funny with the class name and the number after it. The type of lookup is an exact match. Close off that match function. Don't need a column number to so close off that index function. And when we press enter, we have the 3rd of March, which is the last or the most recent occurrence of a Power BI course. But if I change it to Excel Intermediate, it returns the 26th of February. Or if I change it to, what shall I do? Uh, Power Query, we're down here on the 5th of March as the most recent occurrence of that class. Let me widen that for Power Query Day. So that is my example of answering that question. Uh, using solely formulas, finishing with an index match there to look up the most recent occurrence of a date in the past uh, based on criteria which for us is this selection of a class name. We could have achieved it with VBA. Uh, you can probably achieve it with Power Query. Uh, it might be a nice challenge for people out there to go and solve it uh, with Power Query or one of the more dynamic arrays. Here though, using our classic formulas, we can get there without too much effort. And it's a lot of fun as well, isn't it? So I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.